Why do I have to pick a distribution? I hate the word pick because using it makes using Linux sounds like a lot of effort before I even started. Why can't I just install one distribution and start playing games? No one in the history started their gaming life by selecting operating system. Windows is almost always everyone's first choice because we have to use it because all of our friends were using it when we were young. And don't get me started with gaming on phone or console. Everyone is perfectly fine with using the default system. But once I got fed up with Windows, the Linux users made sure to stop me from playing games by giving me tons of choices. And I had no option but to listen to them because they are the expert. Sorry, for years, I have been one of those experts forcing my friends to use Linux. I apologize and thank you guys for still being my friends. In this video, I will try to give some advice on how to pick your first ever gaming Linux distribution so that you don't have to feel overwhelmed and can start playing games right after. I want to make a disclaimer before we start. Gaming on Linux has become a hot topic with recent years of development of Proton and Steam Deck. Even Nvidia has decided to open source their driver. But there is still a long way to go, especially for online games which rely on anti-cheats. So please check the games you want to play on ProtonDB website before keep watching. No one would want you to have a horrible experience using Linux than yourself. Hmm, is that a correct grammar? Anyways, I want to prevent you from getting frustrated before you begin. The first tip is to start with what you already know. And to do that, you need to know your system specs. You need to know which CPU you have, how many GPUs there are in the system. There are a lot of amazing distributions which can do what Windows cannot. But to make the most out of them, users need to have a general knowledge of what their system is like. I'm not super worrying about this because you probably know it pretty well as a gamer. But it's okay if you don't. You just need to identify your system into three categories. Cutting edge, high end system which can do all the games in high settings. A slightly old but a capable machine can play some recent released AAA games in the mid range settings. And an old machine being revived as a retro gaming box. Because different Linux distributions are targeting different hardware, it is better going in with this knowledge in mind. Next, let's pick from the distributions you already know. Chances are, if you have heard of the distribution without even using Linux, it should be quite famous with a relative large community supporting the users. And there will be more guides online to help you start. Don't get hyped up by what others say about some distributions you've never heard of and stay in your comfort zone. If you have heard about Ubuntu for years, then don't go with Pop! OS just because some internet people said it is the best for gaming. Go with Ubuntu. I don't want you to get angry with the community just because you listen to some total strangers online. And if you have not heard of any distribution, Go with Linux Mint and be angry at me. See this video on my 9 reasons why it is good for almost any new Linux users. Again, I'm not saying Mint is the best distribution for everyone out there. It is especially not suitable for those who got a super advanced system. I made this video just hope to eliminate the frustration of all the choices you have to make and help you to start using Linux right away. The other factor to consider is make sure you are happy with the providers who are making the distribution. Although Linux is almost always free, the makers still need to make a living out of it from providing the amazing service. You may find some distributions approach of collecting donation more aggressive than others to your personal taste. For example, one of my friends used to find the paid version of Thorin OS does not suit his personal ideology of free software. And I know the way elementary OS donation slider can be discouraging for some people. I know this is very objective by different people. I just want to make sure you are able to start your journey with comfort and happiness. Once you narrow down your choices, it's time to do some research. If you still can't cut down to one single distribution, then let's go check the look and feel and pick whichever is most appealing to you. 
This can be done by just go to their website and check the screenshots. People have different preferences. Some like simplicity, others like modern look. So see which one you like the most. Choosing the distribution this way will help you stay motivated of using it long term. Even though there are only a handful of desktop environments all the distributions are using, they all have their own tweaks out of the box. The XFCE edition on Manjaro looks way different than it does on MX Linux or X Ubuntu. Even though you can tweak them to look exactly like however you want, I figure for a lot of new Linux users coming from Windows or Mac OS, the most tinkering they will do on a system is probably changing the wallpapers. You definitely want a default look you feel comfortable to use from a distribution out of the box. Next, look at how easy to do boot it with Windows. I can understand if you're skeptical about Linux, so feel free to look at how to do boot with Windows before you're going in. A lot of the popular distributions support it out of the box in their installing USB. It is quite easy to choose however much space you want for each of the system nowadays. The final step before the installation is to see how to install NVIDIA proprietary drivers on the OS of your choice. I heard a lot of complaints about NVIDIA being the biggest blockers among my friends when talking about using Linux. Well, it was true back in the days, but definitely not the case for the last 4 to 5 years. Distributions have spent a lot of effort on making it as painless as possible. For example, Pop OS has a dedicated NVIDIA version ISO file to download. On Manjaro and Zorin OS, you can start an installer using NVIDIA driver, and that will install the driver along with the system. For Ubuntu, Mint, and MX Linux, you can install the driver right inside the system settings. Now, let's install the system and start playing games. The first step is to download and create USB drive. I suggest taking a look at Ventoy. It allows you to simply download several system ISO files, including Windows, and copy them to your USB drive. It will then give you a list on the boot up screen to choose which system you want to install. Because it supports Windows, so you have the peace knowing that you can always switch back to Windows without using another machine to burn the USB, or having an extra USB just for Windows if you mess up the Linux installation. You can follow the official guide on Ventoy to set it up using any Windows machine on any USB external hard drive. Next is the installation part. Usually, as long as you're not going for anything crazy like Arch, Gentoo, or Void, the installation should be straightforward on an easy to use graphical interface. Follow whatever is on the screen and good luck. If all your games are on Steam, then you can install Steam from the major software center provided by the distribution. Log in and enable all the titles with Proton under Steam Play settings. I have found last year to play Assassin's Creed, it was quite tricky to get Uplay to work with Steam. I had to set up the Proton tricks, which is a bit advanced for the new users. Instead, Lutris is the way to go for gamers from Ubisoft. I have also heard a lot of great things about Heroic Game Launcher for GOG games and Bottles for launching even more Windows applications than just games, but I haven't got the time to try them. Let me know in the comment below if you want to see me try those. Also, PC games are not the only ones people play. If you happen to be one of those retro gamers, Linux is the best platform to play them because it has a lot of emulators for old systems, especially if you use Flatpak. I mentioned this tool several times in my channel. It is definitely a game changer for me as a daily Linux user. It mitigates all the pains of having to use different package managers to manage different application versions when switching between different distributions. Not only does it have a lot of gaming support like Discord, Steam, Lutris, and lots of emulators. It also has tons of productivity tools, including proprietary ones people love, like Zoom, VS Code, Chrome, and Microsoft Edge. Check out this video on what it is, why I love it so much, and how to use it. I know using Linux takes a lot of courage. It requires some trials and errors. 
So I hope this video has eased the pain for you a bit to start using it so you won't be stuck with Windows anymore. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.